Hello everyone, my name is Craig and today we're out and about at Rockness Island. It's a beautiful morning here at Hillary's Boat Hub where we're about to catch the Rockness Fast Ferry. We should be there in about an hour and we'll be doing a lot of filming around the island, the beaches, uh, the pockers and uh, lots more. Well, I'm finally on my way from Hillary's Boat Harbour to Rockness Island where I'll be meeting up with my good friends Emily and Uberboy who will be joining me today on this big adventure. Rockness Island is about 19 kilometres off the coast of Fremantle, Western Australia. Rockness Fast Ferries has about four return trips daily from Hillary's Boat Harbour. This trip today cost me about $83 return. You can bring your own bike and take it across the island on the ferry or you can hire a bike from Rockness Fast Ferries. Bicycles are a very popular way to get around the island. But today, I'll be hopping on and off the Island Explorer shuttle bus service. Well, we're finally caught up with my good friends Uberboy and Emily at Thompson Bay. We're now on the Island Explorer, which costs about $20 for a day pass, which means you can hop off and on as many times as you want at any of the 19 designated bus stops right around the island. I reckon this is not only the easiest, but the best way to get around, especially if you've got lots of kids with prams, or even wheelchair, as all the buses have wheelchair access. So let's the adventure begin. I'm at Parker Point at Rockness Island. This is the first stop of my trip around Rockness. What a beautiful stop it is. Absolutely stunning. And it's just the start of the day. So it's gonna be a very good day. Little Salmon Bay. In this bay, you can see sort of stalactite type things there. Sort of Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello, here I am with Emily and Uber Boy. We're here at Little Salmon Bay. This is the second stop of our trip, and our next waiting for the bus now, Adam's bus. And where are we off to next, Uber? Uh, I would say maybe we'll go to the lighthouse. The lighthouse? That sounds odd to me. Yeah, we'll, All right. we'll go up to the lighthouse. We're off to the lighthouse. everyone we're here at the lighthouse what a beautiful spot we are just fantastic view from us hi everyone we're just inside the lighthouse we're going to go up the stairs i'm here with emily and Uberboy and our guide peter he's going to take us up there so let's go up and see what it's all about at the top should be a good view from up there oops we've got a floor here The mezzanine level. Okay, there's a few things I want to do that I see here. We're on the uh, first level. Now uh, this, as I've said, is the highest point of the island and the tallest building on the highest point. So tall buildings attract things, both ancient and modern. 
uh, in ancient times, in modern times. One thing, if we get a storm like we might get this weekend, we, uh, we know we get lightning hitting tall buildings to deal with that. We have a lightning conductor here, so we have to be a bit careful about that uh, this weekend. The other thing that tall buildings attract, of course, in modern times is mobile phone transmitters. Right at the top, you'll see there are some transmitters. So this carries cables from those transmitters down into that little shed outside. And of course, it's not an original feature of the large house. Everything is from us in years or so. Okay, um, just looking at this is beautiful stonework, all done locally. So it's limestone, quarried from the island. And other um, for this lighthouse, um, it was built with a commercial operator. Uh, by 1895, when this was commenced, the Western Australia became a bit more wealthy, and we were getting a lot more visitors because of an event in 1892, the discovery of gold. So. A few years before they started this, we suddenly had a huge increase in the number of ships going from one week to 20 a week, almost overnight change because of the gold. It was also more money, so they could afford a better lighthouse, a bigger lighthouse. And this one was, was done by a commercial firm, but still using the Aboriginal prisons to, to labour. Um, you, you may have heard of C.Y. O'Connor, he was the supervising engineer. So each of those steps just bolts on. And as they're building up the town, they just build this. And each of the centre pieces just bolts onto the rest of it. So you can see at this point, and you can follow the other stickers now. Should be a good view from up the top. You can see the island out there, that's Green Island. And just near there is is where the quarry was, where the stone was cut and brought up the hills. And they built a little a tram line, a train line, and had a horse and cart, and the cart went up and down. So they put on the horse, and put a little stone up the hill. We're still going. It's a long way to the top. <laughs> if you want to rock and roll. Dark shape, and that's one of the big 9.2 inch guns. And they were never really fighting the anger anyway. No, no, no. But people practiced. <laughs> Just in case the Dutch came back. <laughs> <laughs> the Dutch were here. Yeah, the they came back. We had this military base here, it was to protect the submarine base at Fremantle, the second largest submarine fleet in the Allied Command. So the first, the largest one was at Pearl Harbor. The second largest one was here. And that was American, British, Australian, Dutch. Dutch natives all had their submarines based here in Fremont because it was a long way from anywhere. It was pretty hard to get here. So it's a good place to hide, I guess. All right, keep it going. Ooh, pretty good to sweat. Yeah. I think we're almost to the top. Oh wow, it's timber. So what's this? Well, we're effectively in the office of the light keepers. So for, from the earliest days, we had up to three light keepers based on the island and they would do four hour shifts twice a day. So rotating through the 24 hours, there was always somebody on duty keeping an eye on things. Part of their role was to spend all day looking out the window. That's a good job, isn't it? Yeah, sounds <laughs> because, great. Because, because, um, they needed to be able to see ships when they arrived. Often before we had phones and satellite navigation and all the rest of it, ships communicated with land by signals. And often that was a flag, sometimes it could be like a flashing light, like Morse code, but often it was a flag. And flags all had their different meanings. And putting up the flag and <coughs> saying we need a doctor or something is all very well, so long as somebody's looking. And it's the job of the people here to do the looking. 
So they had to keep a record of any vessels that they saw. They would have had a register sitting over there, write down the wind conditions, the weather, whatever happened, that would be recorded there. And this was their yeah, office there. There's a sink in there, cupboards here, you could bring your lunch up or whatever, and you don't want to go up and down too often. No. But their main task, of course, was to keep the light functioning. And the light is in this area just above us. We'll go up there in a moment. In the early days, until uh, we electrified the light in 1936, uh, this was run, the light operated mechanically, because the light turns, and you can hear it now. That's the light mechanism turning. In the old days, it was turned mechanically, and I'll show you how in here. So you have a little look in here. These are, you can see there's a, a bit, push that just your foot and just feel how heavy it is. Just try and move it. Yeah, it's quite heavy, yeah? yeah. <laughs> so there's a bunch of those sitting side that, on, on that chain. You wind the chain up to the top, and then just gravity feeds all the way down. And it just, and as it goes down, it's turning the mechanism. You'll see that wow. when you go up there. Lighthouse, and remember, this is still a, a, an active, functioning lighthouse. That's why there are lots of rules about who can come and how many and so on. Just watch your head, it's quite narrow, and at certain points low, like just here. So watch your head as you come up. The other thing is, watch this orange. Don't hit your head on that, it's hard. But as you're going under, you can see that mechanism still there for winding up the, there's the handle for winding it up as it used to be. This is the business end. And you can either stand right back here, and you can see it going now, or you can look through there if you what's going on underneath. So, from where we're standing, you can actually see from time to time that big exhaust at the top. So, basically we've got here, a very tiny, we've got a new light, it's an LED light, it's only been installed last year. Before that, there were those little tiny ones we saw down on the ground floor. These ones are probably even smaller. And yet they can be seen as much as certainly 50 kilometres, probably 80 kilometres on a clear day out at sea. A tiny little light. How does that work? It's because those lenses around it, which have been here since day one. So these were built in England, brought out here, and they still work perfectly. Beautiful glass work. So they are designed, when the light comes on automatically, once it's dark enough, there's a sensor, it'll turn it on. The light is obviously being dispersed in all directions, but those lenses concentrate it into eight beams, horizontal beams, that are turning all the time. And so if you're at Cottesloe, standing on the beach, you'll see it flash. But it's not a light going on and off. What it is, the lenses. It's, it's the beams. It's the beams shining in your eye and then there's the darkness. Mm. Now, there are eight beams here, so it's like the spokes of a wagon wheel, perhaps. Eight beams going around like that. It takes one minute to do a complete circumference, a circuit. So you get, if you're at Cottesloe or anywhere else, <laughs> some distance away, you'll see eight flashes per minute one every seven and a half seconds. And if you're at sea, and you've got the right book, and you see a light flashing every seven and a half seconds, you know where you are. You're at breakfast, because that's the signature of this lighthouse. And every lighthouse near here, or, you know, in Australia, will have a different signature. Mm. They'll flash at different sequences. Some go, like, there's a second little lighthouse here that does four short flashes and then they get four short flashes. Well, but it was good in the old days before GPS was around and the sailors know exactly where they were. And don't think they've stopped. They still do it. I had a submariner up here last year, works at the Navy base there, his submarine. Every time they come out, they check their instruments and verify them against this lighthouse. That's fantastic. And I've told all the ships do it. I, I've been told that in my training, but I had a sub mariner <laughs> up here saying, confirm it. <laughs> I wanted to come to this lighthouse because I always check my instruments against it every time we go out. And that was confirmation for me. Wow. <laughs> 
Have a look at this. My God. This is the best view in Rockness. Without a shadow of doubt. Before we go back down, I just want to say thank you for taking us up to the lighthouse today, Peter. It has been a great experience. Well, thank and you. And it's the best view I've ever seen in WA so far. Well, thank you for coming. Um, particularly, thank you for thank you. Adam's service yeah. too. And uh, I like to say this is the highlight of Rodness. Yeah, we'll be definitely back. It really is. We'll definitely be it's back awesome. again. Yeah. Now, do watch your heads as you go down. Or else you <laughs> <laughs> We certainly did pick the right day to come here, but the weather is so perfect. Uh, it's probably 24, 26, not too hot. It's a slight sleeve breeze, but just perfect weather. Oh, we're just waiting for the bus to take us to the next destination, which is the West End. West End. Yeah, we're going to the West End. We just arrived at the West End of Rockness Island, so let's go and have a little look. Here we are at the city of York Bay and it's named after a ship that actually crashed off the rocks off the coast here. Uh, it misjudged the communication from the lighthouse but what a stunning beach is it. There really is some amazing beaches here at Rock Nest. We're still here at the city of York Bay and our friend Emily has found or made a new friend. Let's go and take a look. Here's a little quarter. Hello mate, how are you? Put it in my handbag. Guys, make sure when you come to Rockness, uh, get a store here with a flocker. There's plenty here, 13,000 flockers. And they would love to take a selfie with you. So don't leave without a selfie with a flocker. Here we are at Long Reach Bay here on Rotnes Island, just past Geordie Bay, and we're on our way to Thompson Bay to have some lunch and some beverages. A bit thirsty after our big adventure this morning. There's Emily and Uber Boy waiting for me at the top of the hill. Bay Township is Rockness Island's main shopping area. You'll find shops here such as Subway, there's a general store, gift shops, cafes, restaurants, there's a bakery that makes awesome pies. You'll also find WA Famous Dome Cafe and just a little further down the road you'll find Hotel Rockness which has great entertainment, fine food and refreshing cold drinks.
Hello everybody, we're back now at Hillary's Boat Harbour after a big day out of Rockness Island. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I'll be back with more videos very shortly. So I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.